Everyone agrees the top champion Gita's theme was a bit of a letdown in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. She says she can't hold back, but then holds back her Toxic Spikes Glamora until the end of the battle. What they should have done is have her lead with Glamora and then a whole bunch of other suggestions people gave me on the main Gita video I did. However, one paid DLC later and what do we see? Gita now leads with Glamora. And she saves her King Gambit till the very end, getting the most benefit from its ability and also terastalizing it into a flying type to counter its fighting and ground type weaknesses. Looks like all hope is not lost for the top champion, and of course, me being me, I really want to see how her new team does. But instead of doing the whole base game as Gita all over again, I decided to take her over to Blueberry Academy, where the difficulty is so high, I felt like I was trying out for the VGC. Also, it felt more fitting since this is the only place where Gita actually uses this new team and not in the base game. So hold on to your hats gamers because it's it's time to see if Gita could actually become champion in the DLC. Before hopping onto a plane to Unova, we had some other business to take care of, like collecting some of the new TMs to match her new team's moveset, as well as making our way down to the Zero Lab after getting an anonymous tip from a very hip student named Clive. On the way down, Gita can catch her first new teammate, Dragapult. Who needs a Vault and Veluza when you have a Darting Dragon? However, her Dragapult isn't the only new Pokemon Gita gets from Paldea, because this thing is supposed to know Sucker Punch, and it can only learn that attack as an egg move from a select number of ghost types. Since I wasn't too sure which one would be best, I decided to do the YouTuber thing and make a poll, see what people choose, and they voted for Spiritomb. So I went to go catch one, and uh, yeah, Spiritomb would rather be dead than on Gita's team. Instead, I went for the second best option, and the one most commenters agreed would fit her team better. I, I love your guys' comments, they're so good. Having wrapped up our outstanding work in Paldea, we could finally fly over to Blueberry Academy and get our first taste of double battles with this brand new team. Unfortunately, we failed to knock out the electric mice with our ground type move, but that meant I could actually see Lacey's strategy in this battle, which was to spam Discharge with both Plusso and Minum, which hits both of my Pokemon while powering each other up thanks to their lightning rod ability? Not too big of a deal, so after subtracting Minum from the equation, I tried to use Dragon Darts thinking it would be a good move, but we barely did any damage. Thankfully, Gita still has her Avalug who came in clutch, using Earthquake to finish off the plus O and do major damage to her Excadrill. From there, it was an easy victory for Gita, although this battle was a lot harder than I expected. This was supposed to be the easy one. Either way, we were now registered as an official visitor to Blueberry Academy and could attend some of their classes and even participate in BBQs to earn BP. But as it turns out, if you come here without finishing the Teal Mask DLC, this is as far as you can get. So while I go battle Carmen to access the rest of this overpriced DLC, let me tell you about something else that's overpriced. Well, everything nowadays, but one thing that doesn't have to cost so much is your wireless phone bill. I mean, what are you even paying all that extra for? Speed? Coverage? Data? Unlimited text and talk? Hotspots, maybe? But what if I told you that I've partnered with Mint Mobile to get you all of these features for as low as $15 a month? They're built on the nation's largest 5G network and keep costs low because they sell directly to you online, so they are aren't wasting money on things like rent for retail stores. I mean, have you seen how high rent has gotten? The other great thing about Mint is how easy it is to switch over. They'll mail you a new SIM card for free if your phone needs one, and then you just follow some super simple instructions to set it all up. It took me less than 15 minutes to make the switch. If you want to save on your wireless bill, go to trymintmobile.com vasco, also linked in the description. And now, through the end of January, new customers can get any plan for just $15 a month month when they purchase 3 months or more. This includes the unlimited plan which is normally $30 a month. Talk about good savings. Now back to the video. One interesting thing I noticed is that the disco ball that powers up terastalization in the dome is this murky white color until you complete the Teal Mask DLC. Once you do finish the story, it turns back into that nice green that most of us saw on our first visit here. Anyways, we can now kick off the story by battling Carmen again. She gets to keep her Mighty Anna and Sinistra, but her new team includes a two cannon and a Scrafty, perhaps as a way to imply that she's good friends with Lacey and Amorous, since these Pokemon can only 
be found in the tropical and canyon biomes respectively. I mean, we already knew about the amorous thing, but Lacey. This also means she runs double intimidate, but that doesn't matter since Gita's leads are both special attackers. Anyways, after our victory, we're invited to try out the Blueberry League because top champions should be able to become champions anywhere, right? But before going on to battle the Elite Four, Gita had to go get her other new Pokemon, Chestnut. First, you have to upgrade the canyon biome by paying 3000 BP, and that meant I had to grind for hours. The other option is to beat up every trainer in Blueberry Academy. And since her chestnut also has a hidden ability, I would need an ability patch which I could get from the gacha crafting machine, this method would also require hours of grinding to do, or just beat up every trainer in Blueberry Academy. So anyways, I try to beat up every trainer and uh, let me tell ya, Gita was struggling, so this too would take a while. Not only that, but I realized that we would definitely get way too over leveled from fighting all 60 trainers. And since I recently went to battle all of them on my main account for another video I'm working on, I made the executive decision to just catch a chestman there, use the ability patch on it, and send it over to Gita. Not the best solution, but I prefer that over having a whole team of level 100s for this run. Bye bye Gogo, you'll be missed. And now that Gita's new team is fully complete, it was time to take on the Elite Four. Surely this top champion would have an easy time winning against a bunch of kids, right? Well, out of the four battles, I could only win two. First up was Crispin and his spicy hot team. I wish this was his actual team. We hit them with a very weak Dazzling Gleam, then sniped the Talonflame with some power gems. Then we finished off the Rotom while protecting against the Solar Beam. Out next was Camerup, then realizing it's quite bulky, Gita goes for the Lumina Crash to lower its special defenses and follows up with Earth Power, a special ground type move to finish it off. The downside is that we had to let Glamora get a Solar Beam to the face in order to pull it off. Out next is Magmortar and we tried to pull off the same Lumina Crash strategy again, but since Dragapult is too fast, it had to attack a second turn to get the KO. Sadly, Espathra didn't make it that long. This leaves both Gita and Crispin with only two Pokemon each. Chestnut draws the aggro from Executor, while King Gambit baits Blaziken to use a fighting type move which would do 4 times damage, but then terrestrializes into a flying type who only takes half damage from those type of attacks. This gives us the opening to hit it with a Stone Edge and finish things off. All that's left to do is hit his executor with a flying Terra Blast and the battle is as good as one. Next up was Lacey with her cute fairy type Pokemon. Here we won mainly thanks to Chestnut drawing all the aggro once again and protecting a bunch, while the rest of our team slowly chipped away at all the fairies. It wasn't a very exciting battle, but hey, win is a win. Now the other two, Amaris and Drayton? <laughs> there was nothing Gita could do. But instead of calling it quits, I decided to give this top champion one last push. After all, one reason these guys are so tough to defeat is because they use held items, so I only thought it would be fair to give some items to Gita's team as well, and things went a lot better this time. By giving Glamora a balloon, she could now survive Dugtrio's earthquake and finish it off with a ground type move of our own. Emerus follows up with Empoleon, but we use the Lumina Crash combo to finish it off before it could do any damage. Then we use the same combo to finish off the Skarmory, which we were ignoring for so long since it wasn't too much of a threat. Sadly, our sweep ends here since Emerus sets up a trick room and bullet punches Glamora out of existence. I send out Chestnut next to draw in some aggro and use the opportunity to spam Shadow Balls at Reuniclus. And since we can't guard back to back, Emerus goes for the Aerial Ace, which would have one shot Chestnut, but it gets to live thanks to its Focus Sash. We use the extra turn to protect again and finish off her pesky Psychic type. Then Emerus pulls a reverse sweep until we just have two Pokemon left. King Gambit once again baits the Metagross into attacking it with a Fighting type move, and then we turn into a Flying type, so no damage for us. This allows us to bulk through the attacks and finish off the fight with its buddy Avalon. Without the Balloon and Focus Sash, Gita's team would always lose here, I tried it so many times, there was no winning. The problem is that even with those items, she cannot do anything against Mr. X Champion over here. That's because his Flygon can sweep through our leads, and even though we can slightly turn the tides with Dragapult and Avalug, our last two Pokemon can't do anything against the Archaludon. We don't have any super effective hits, and since his Kingdra loves to set up rain before it dies, that signature move of his gets the goal the same turn. It powers him up and then it nukes us. So even with items, Gita would absolutely lose to Drayton. Give her the line. Give her the line, Drayton.
Since I was kind of curious to see how Gita would do in the rest of the DLC, I cheesed my way through the fight and went on to face Karen. and I was expecting the worst. We used Power Gem to weaken his Dragonite, then followed up with Dragapult who used its Dragon Darts to finish it off. The Politoed was being a problem, so we hit it with a Lumina Crash and finished it off with Dragapult the next turn. Karen went for the Ice Beam on our Dragon, which left his Porygon wide open to a Draining Punch. Next, we went for Protect on Chestnut and Earthquaked with Avalug, followed up by an offensive turn where we drain punch Incineroar and heavy slam the Grin Snarl, leaving little Karen with just his Hydrapple. He tried to attack with Fickle Beam, but Avalug bulked through and dished out major damage with an Avalanche. That gave Chestnut the opening to drain punch and knock it out the next turn, netting us an easy victory. Thinking back on it, Avalug got a lot of trash talked about it in the main game, but this Pokemon is definitely super useful in Gita's team for doubles. Anyways, having defeated Karen, we get to meet Gita Gita, whose real reason for coming to Blueberry Academy enemy is to send Briar down to Area 0 and give her the Indigo Disc. Interestingly enough, if you invite Gita over to the post game, she will tell you that she has gone down to the Zero Lab several times but never managed to figure out how to use the Indigo Disc. It's a strange thing to say considering that machine out front literally screamed at us to put the disc in. Although I guess it explains why the gate was closed again. Gita's probably the one who closed it. Anyways, after a really long elevator ride, we made our way down to the Under Depths and punched a bunch of stellar Pokemon then made her way to the treasure room where Kirin finally gets to catch a legendary Pokemon. And we get to fight them. Glimora versus Terrapagos. Who would win? Considering the turtle knows earth power, Glimora stands no chance. Good thing we have the Avalug who can use body press to squish the tiny turtle. Of course, this isn't good enough for Kirin, and Briar being the psycho that she is, eggs him on to terrestrialize it and unlock its full power. And now it's so powerful that not even a master ball can contain it, so we get a round two. Carmen is kind enough to help us out here and draw aggro with her Sinistra, while we use Lumina Crash to lower the turtle's special defenses and take down its first shield with ease. Unfortunately, we're on our own for phase 2 and now we're starting to panic as this thing started to shred through most of Gita's team. But that just meant King Gambit would be stronger, so we terrestrialize into a flying type and use Kaltau Cleave to finish off its second shield. Karen finally decided to join us for phase 3 and we managed to break through its last shield, but moments after, it used its Terra Storm attack to knock out our King Gambit. This would have left things to Kieran here, but since I didn't trust that boy, I sent out Glamora, who I revived in panic while Chestnut was getting two shot by Terrapagos. And by some miracle of friendship, we lived long enough to attack with Power Gem, finishing off the battle in Glamora's favor. Now typically, this is where the story would end, but since the game gave us a secret final boss in the DLC, I figured I might as well see how Gita does against them too. The thing about Saffron is that you first have to befriend 10 other special trainers, like the gym leaders from Paldea. And to do that, you will need to invite them at least 3 times each at the cost of 200 BP per invite, meaning you'd need at least 6000 BP to unlock this boss. Trying to grind for 6000 points by myself would take me like half a day, so I decided to use my streamer privilege and get a bunch of people over with the pal portal and have them do all the grinding side quest stuff for me. This was very fitting for Gita's character, since she seems to offload her work on everyone else around her. But of course, the grind doesn't end there, because next Next, I needed to send out 30 invitations, talk to each person I've invited several times, and also turn down their request for battle twice for some reason. Why twice? While this process was very grindy, it was pretty nice to read up on some extra lore for these characters, especially the ones I haven't made a video on yet. And after two grueling hours of inviting and talking to people, I finally had enough clout to challenge Saffron. Surprise surprise, the real strongest trainer in Blueberry Academy is actually Cyrano, and he's also the strongest strongest NPC in Pokemon history based on his Pokemon's levels. His initial strategy was to spam Bulldoze and knock out Glamora, then snarl at her weakest Pathra with the bulky chicken. Gita followed up with Dragapult who used its Dragon Darts to finish off the Zebra, and Avalug who buried the bird with an Avalanche. Cyrano followed up with not one starter Pokemon, but two. And then they both missed their first round of attacks, so Avalug could bring them down to size with an Earthquake. Dragapult then finished off Samoroth with a Thunderbolt, and Ambor used Flare Blitz to melt our Ice but then got knocked out thanks to the recoil and poison. This left Cyrano with Superior and got to tell. We got to deal major damage with a Shadow Ball while he gave us a Paralyzing Glare. And since got to tell started setting up, we tried to take it out with another Shadow Ball, but this guy is actually Galaxy Brain. He used Rest to fully restore its HP and cure it from poison. And of course he had a Chesto Berry so it woke up 
right away. All that stalling gave Cyrano enough time to finish off Dragapult by spamming Terrablast, but we responded with a draining punch which one shot his superior ace. And since our ace, King Gambit, has a type advantage, it could easily one shot the Gothitelle with a single Kaltau Cleave, securing the victory for Gita and finally giving poor Cyrano a good battle after a few decades. How strong is this guy? Don't do another run, do not do another run, do not do another run, you have like six more gym leaders to cover. Overall, Gita's new team is quite the mixed bag. At first, I was a bit sad to take out the Go Goat, but Chestnut proved to be an amazing replacement who loves to draw that aggro. And that Avalug definitely came in clutch for most of the battles. However, she definitely needed items to win against Amaris and simply couldn't win against Drayton. So even though Gita could not become champion in Blueberry Academy, I don't think her new team is necessarily as disappointing as her team in the main game. Since you've made it this far, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this topic. How are we feeling about Gita's new team? Does it still need improvement? And if so, what would you change? What would you add? Anyways, this was a fun little break from the story-based Can X Become Champion series, but it's time to go and cover the other four gym leaders while the plot thickens. And if you haven't watched the series yet, go check out the playlist. I'm trying my best to give the gym leaders of Paldea an interesting story, and I really hope you enjoy it. Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!